Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be going over how to successfully pass the Niantic Wayfarer test. Now, I've actually had a decent amount of you guys reach out to me saying that you actually failed your Niantic Wayfarer test. And for those of you guys who are unaware, you only actually get two attempts to pass the test. And if you fail the first try, you have to wait 30 days before you can actually retake the test. And if you fail it a second time, well, unfortunately, you won't be able to review at all permanently on that account. So that really sucks. And I actually think it's really important that you guys, you know, take it very seriously when you do go through it. And that's basically what we're going to be going over in this video. So before we actually go ahead and get started, as always, if you guys do enjoy this video and find it helpful, please make sure to hit that like button down below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you guys do want to see more Niantic Wafer videos in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, so I'm just going to be going over my Niantic Wayfarer test in this video, basically to just show you guys what it's going to be looking like. And essentially this is, you know, stuff that you will see on the reviewer side of things, and it's going to be different for everybody. So no one test by Niantic Wayfarer is going to be the same for everybody. This is why it is so important to watch my previous video on Niantic Wayfarer, my full in-depth tutorial guys. That way you understand everything you need to know in order to take this reviewer test and complete it successfully. I mean, seriously, it is so important that you guys learn how to review correctly, not only just to pass the test, but also that you actually, you know, get more agreements, which is going to get you upgrades, which is going to ultimately help you to get your uh, Pokestops approved even faster, or essentially go through the process even faster, I should say. So it's really important that you guys learn how to do this stuff correctly, so make sure to go check out that video if you have not done so already, or if you are still feeling a little bit iffy about Niantic Wayfarer in general, whether that be the review system or the submission system whatever it is guys I have everything that you need to know on this channel and you can always ask me in a comment below anything that you guys want to know I will do my best to respond to them as soon as possible but with that being said let's go ahead and walk through my Niantic Wayfarer test starting with our first question we got asked should Fieldhouse Shrine be a way spot and we got five different options now the first thing I want to point out right now is that the picture is actually kind of bad it doesn't even focus on the statue itself or the shrine itself so right away that's kind of like yeah that's not really like a good submission right there just based on the photo alone and additionally I mean if you look at the location that they put it at you can tell it's on their house so obviously this is a one star rating right here but you got to take a look at the options guys now for those of you guys who have taken multiple choice exams or quizzes before this basically works in the same way and what I mean by that is that whenever you take those kinds of exams you have four or five options right now one of those options is going to be the best possible option. It doesn't mean that, you know, the other three or the other four are going to necessarily be bad. It just means that one option out of the options that you were given are going to be the best possible option. So let's go ahead and walk this through right now and I'll explain what that kind of means. So first of all, uh, your first option is going to be yes, it meets the criteria for a hidden gem or hyper local spot. Of course, that's definitely a no brainer. That's not what this is. Uh, the second one is yes, it's a public place of worship. Now, technically that could could be true. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't really fall within the guidelines because it is on private residential property. Now, the third option says, no, it does not have safe pedestrian access, which is also technically true since it is on private property. It's not really safe for the public. And so essentially that option is correct, but it's not the best option there. And then we move on over to option number four, which is no, it's on private residential property. And then option number five is no, it's not an interesting nomination for a way spot. So five, again, is also technically technically right, but or be no, it's on private residential property is the main thing here, guys. That is by far the best possible answer you could be picking. So when we compare all the options, yes, uh, option four, no, it's on private residential property is going to be your best choice, but it does not mean that option five or option three were technically wrong. They were technically right, but they just weren't the best option. So that is honestly the main thing that you have to keep in mind when you are taking this test is that you're going to have to go through a selection of options and one of them is going to be better than the rest, but it doesn't necessarily mean that all those options are technically wrong. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move on over to question number two, which is going to be, should Apex Pond be a way spot? Now, this one is going to give you two different options. The first one is going to be, yes, it includes a man-made point of interest, for example,
example, a signboard or a plaque, or no, it's a natural feature. Now, once again, guys, this really just goes back to understanding the criteria for uh, way spots and stuff like that, which again, I have gone ahead and covered in my Niantic Wayfarer full in-depth tutorial. So this one definitely should be a pretty easy question, guys. It's no, it's a natural feature. For obvious reason, that goes against the criteria. Basically, you just can't take pictures of like landscapes and stuff and expect that to turn into a Pokestop. Now, moving onward to question number three, it is going to be asking us, should Union Train Station be a way spot? Now we're gonna go through five options once again. First one being, yes, it meets the criteria for a hidden gem or hyper local spot. Two, yes, it's a public park. Obviously, it's not a public park. Three, yes, it's a transit station. That's actually a pretty good option. Four, no, it does not have safe public pedestrian access. That's not true. Clearly, you can see it in the picture that it does. And then five, no, it's not an interesting nomination for a way spot. Now, once again, guys, this really goes back to understanding the criteria. This should be a pretty easy answer. It's a good picture right there, too. It does show that it is in the right spot as well, based on the location. And, uh, well, you know it's not a hyper local spot, and you know it's not a public park, and none of the other options seem like really good choices. And it's pretty obvious that it is a transit station, which if you guys have done your research and you've done your homework and you've watched the tutorial already, you know that transit stations are actually good candidates for waste spots. So once again, guys, it really does go back to understanding what you're doing and understanding the information and the criteria. If you do, this stuff should be pretty straightforward. Now moving onward to question number four, it is going to ask us, should Tom Ball Fire Station be a waste spot? Now we get two different options here. We get first one being, yes, it meets the criteria for location with a cool story story, a place in history, or educational value. And then the second option being, no nomination that obstruct emergency services do not meet the waste spot criteria. Now once again guys, another easy answer right here and that is going to be no because it does obstruct emergency services. This is a fire station, this is an active fire station, you can tell by the pictures and you can tell by its location. Um, if this was maybe like a fire station museum, that would be a different story, but it's not. It's an active fire station, which means, yeah, it's going to obstruct emergency services. So right there, easy no. Now for my question five, it was basically the same exact thing. Just, you know, should fire station 23 be a waste spot? You guys already know based on my last answer, it is going to be a no. There's really no difference here. Once again, the only um, thing that would maybe be different consideration would be if it was some sort of like museum. And that would be the only criteria that I could think of that would maybe you know make things a little bit more complicated but in these scenarios they're pretty straightforward to understand and they're good examples so I got kind of lucky that question four and five were basically the same thing and I actually think I had another question later on that uh, was another fire station question moving on over to question number six which is going to be should human sun clock be a waste spot now on the location you can actually tell that this is going to be on school grounds now if it is above high school education basically meaning if it's like a college of some sort that is actually okay but if it's anything like high school elementary school middle school daycare etc that is not going to be okay and pokey stops or waste spots cannot be uh, placed on those property grounds now this is pretty clear that it is going to be on school grounds based on the uh, location picture from Google Street View. When you guys are taking this test, it is really important that you look at the street view and you can actually see where this stuff is. It is very obvious that it was going to be on school grounds and you know some people may or may not overlook that and they might think it is a cool piece of art or unique architecture because I mean what we see in front of us isn't that weird. I mean it is a little bit unique. I definitely don't see stuff like that too often so it could fall under that category but once again guys you have to look at the location. You have to be able to tell hey this is on school grounds grounds or hey this is on a fire station or hey this is in some place that it really shouldn't be and you know you have to base your decision off that if you're just like oh hey this is cool but you know you just completely forget where the location is that could be a reason why you actually fail the reviewer test moving onward to question number seven should the flower clock be a waste spot our two options are going to be yes it meets the criteria for a cool piece of art or unique architecture or two no the location does not have pedestrian access now this one, it is actually really cool and you can tell based on the location that it's not in a weird location, it does have good pedestrian access. And so the answer is going to be yes, it does meet the criteria for a cool piece of art or unique architecture, as you guys can easily see in the picture. Moving onward to question number eight, this was arguably the most difficult question I had on my reviewer test and I definitely struggled with this one because it was really hard to tell. 
but I was able to use the supporting information that I had available to me and kind of made a decision based on that. So this question asks me, how would you rate the Citadel? Five stars, nomination is a playground in a park or community gathering place, or one star, nomination is not interesting or visually unique. Now this is actually really tricky because if there were multiple playgrounds in that area, technically it's not really visually unique, right? Or it's not interesting because there's a bunch of playgrounds. And then five stars being the nomination is a playground in a park or community gathering place. Uh, yeah, technically that is true. It is a playground. But the thing is, um, in the guidelines, it actually also mentions that people cannot really be in the photo. And you can clearly see a bunch of people in this picture. So it's really difficult because I actually would not give this a five star. I'd probably give it like a three or four star. Just given the picture quality. Also, you can't really tell the Citadel is the focus. And, uh, they could have definitely taken a better picture of this in my opinion. So it was rather difficult. But if you do look in the Google Street, street view you can tell that it is actually in the right location and stuff like that so it leans more towards it being a five stars rather than a one star like i definitely don't think this is a one star candidate so with that reasoning in mind it was a little bit tricky to decide on this one because i mean i felt like it was going to be leaning more towards five stars but i didn't really feel like it was a five star candidate so i don't know i guess if there was like a third option in there for like a three star i would have felt more comfortable with that but because it was just one or the other i was like all right well it seems more like a five star rather than a one star and so that's what I went with but this was definitely the most uh, challenging question on my test personally. Question number nine for me was actually a really really easy one based on the picture that they provided. Um, it asked me though should sunset trees be a waste spot? Now, the five options it gave me were going to be yes, it meets the criteria for a hidden gem or hyper local spot, definitely not. Uh, two, yes, it's a public park. And based on the picture, you can't really tell. I mean, the picture is bad on its own, but uh, it could have been a public park if you didn't look at the street view. Uh, third option being no, it's a natural feature. Fourth option being no, it does not have safe public pedestrian access. And then five, no, it's not a permanent display. So um, I went with no, it's a natural feature basically because it's just a tree. You can't, you know, just submit trees and expect those to turn into Pokestops. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, even if it was a public park, taking a picture of a tree really doesn't do that justice. You have to take a picture of a sign in order for like a Pokestop or a waste spot to actually get created or to get approved, I should say. So, I mean, even if it was a public park, you know, the picture would definitely not go through. It is obviously taken from a car as well. So on top of that, it's just a terrible picture. And uh, well, clearly you cannot submit trees. And then if you also go ahead and look at the street view, you can tell that it's in a parking lot. It's basically just at the end of a parking lot. So in my opinion, I thought this question was pretty easy just given all the supporting evidence we did have in front of us. Now moving onward to our final question, it is going to be, should Lee County Emergency Operations Center be a waste spot? Now our two options we're given is going to be, yes, it meets the criteria for location with a cool story, a place in history, or educational value. And then our second option being, once again, no, it may interfere with the operations of secure slash emergency operations. Now if you take a look at the street view, you guys you can tell that that is going to be the case uh, based on where the pokey stop or the waste spot would be it uh, really was not in a good location and uh, once again it is going to interfere with emergency operations it's even in the title of the um waste spot it says lee county emergency operations center so that one's a pretty easy no so as we mentioned with the fire stations earlier guys you cannot have anything that's going to interfere with emergency operations pretty straightforward and uh yeah that's about it so uh yeah that was my last question of course i passed the reviewer test guys it really wasn't that difficult i knew my stuff like i said the only thing i had trouble with was uh question number eight everything else was pretty straightforward for the most part uh question one was a little bit difficult in the sense where like it could have been a lot of different answers but there was like one answer that was better than the rest and i think a lot of you guys may struggle with those questions especially if you don't take this extremely seriously now i understand everyone is really excited to review pokey stuff guys but if you don't pass this test you're gonna have to wait 30 days to retake it and if you don't pass it a second time well then you can never retake it again it's really not a difficult test overall obviously you guys got to see firsthand what that was like and i hope it does help you out in the future with your reviewer test if you did not pass this first time i'm pretty confident if you guys watch my uh, tutorial and you watch this video over again before you take your next test i think you guys will do fine or even if you're taking the test for the first time hopefully this allows you to sort of understand what is required and why it's important that you guys do take the time to learn how this process
process works. You know, once again, guys, I have said this so many times in this video, if you have not watched my in-depth tutorial on Niantic Wayfair for the reviewer system, make sure to go watch that. There will be a link in the description below, as well as in the top right corner if you guys have not seen that by now. But uh, yeah, that's basically everything um, that we needed to go over in this video. I hope this did help you all out. I definitely want to get more Niantic Wayfair videos out in the future, so if you guys have any other questions for me, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to respond to them or make a future video on the topic. But with that being said, that is going to do it for this one, guys. Once again, if you did enjoy the video and found it helpful, please make sure to hit that like button down below. And if you guys do want to see more Niantic Wayfarer content in the future, feel free to hit that subscribe button as well. And I will see you all real soon in the next one.